Hello, my name is Carol Ott Coelho and I am Associate Director of Choral Activities here at UNCG and Director of the University Chorale. This spring we created a COVID safe performance of music by Gwyneth Walker and texts by environmentalist John Francis from his book Planet Walker. With support from the College of Visual and Performing Arts and the Environment and Sustainability Program, we were able to create this performance experience which combines music, text, and dance by Dylan Reddish and Nicole Lawson. We were also able to host a Zoom chat with John Francis and have included a portion of his time with us near the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great summer. journeys within journeys, how I came to be on this journey, as well as the meaning of pilgrimage for me and society is the subject of this book. Of course, we are all pilgrims of one kind or another, and 
hope that my story will help you begin, complete, or enhance your own pilgrimage. I use the pages from my daily journals to look back. This is how it begins. The wilderness I have come to experience is how they dance, the trees with long green needles, how they stand in the wind, bending and swaying, and how they come to the water and drink there among the rocks like three sisters. I see movement, mixed among the variegated hues of green ferns and grasses, bushes and small trees loaded with blue huckleberries and red choke cherries, a flash of gray, and the trail that is an invisible path is traced by a fat squirrel bounding with its tail high. It goes down steeply, 
switch back through the trees down to the water, not the way I imagine. But I do not really know the trails until I look back, until I catch sight of the gray squirrel on it. I relax into a simple experiential knowledge that unfolds within me. I am learning to see. I watch the Blue Jays, 50 or more, that come down each day, swooping easily from limb to limb with ruckus laughter, feet curled under. And in the quiet, I hear the voice of the river passing among the rocks and over stones, everywhere at once, making its way deep through the steep Grand Canyons to the sea. I try to catch the words mingling with the shushing of the trees. Perhaps this is where our speech began. Maybe long ago, before there were words, there was only the river, and the people listened to the water, and the quiet whispering. I can only understand the laughter. I am still learning how to listen. Thank you. 
In the night, the canyon rises black beneath a starry sky. And on this soft velvet, I paint pictures in my mind of what is hidden here. Until the moon lifts above the rim and silver shadows dance to the river and splash across the rocks. At Slide Creek, I slow down to a stop and all the hurried miles, the noise and smoky choke of the speeding roads and highways finally slide away. I stay for five days. Then one morning, the fish scale sky hinting rain, I leave Slide Creek stepping on five stones across the Chetco River and continue south through dense growths of poison oak. The trail greatly needs repair, but I have grown to expect and accept it as part of the wilderness, as much as the large striped hornets, dark and menacing, that suddenly appear grabbing moths from midair and the threatening sound of a rattlesnake's tail shaking in the knee-high grass.
belong together, as if they are part of a whole. Where they touch, creation takes place, and we are perhaps closest to that which is true. It is from silence that all speech, and therefore all myth, begins. Speech is the myth of that which cannot be spoken. When the world of myth and theory confuses us, silence is always there, affording us the opportunity not merely to question our assumptions, but to discard them and begin again. Yeah, that's the that's the one where I go, um, we can practice sustainability by being really kind to each other every day, really thinking about human rights and civil rights and gender equality and all the ways we relate to each other. That's sustainable. And if you think about it, if we do that, if we become the CEO of a great company, if we're already thinking about, hey, you know, we can only think about being kind to each other, then we're not going to treat people as externalities in our capitalistic world. See where we go, hey, hey, they have to pay for that if we pollute the water. That's not on us. That's an externality. No, we would say, Oh my God, we're polluting the water, stop, tell them, no, wait, hold on. We have to fix that before they can tell them, we'll give them water until we fix it. You know, let them know that. That's how our world would be. Mm -hmm.